now we can proceed with Auntie Mons. Now we're going to proceed what it is all about cooking. So remember, you know, food is going to be your vehicle to what you're going to say. So that's what you need to know your repertoire. But it's all about that. It's how you explain it, how you express it, and what is it that you want to say. So I am in Top Chef Master, this cooking competition with the best chefs in the world. They put us together, 15 of us, in a cooking show with no days off, with the most extreme circumstances. And um, this was a, a competition in which a challenge in which we have to cook for 300 people for a brunch, a very high end brunch with uh, these very famous people. And I'm between 13 chefs that they were about 14, 15, that they were amazing. And they're all, everybody's making like compressed pineapple that looks like bacon. The other one is making this incredible dish with so much technique. And I said, listen, if I want to make brunch, I'm going to make you the recipe that I grew up with. There are, you know, from my home, of course, elevated in a way of creating these different type of sauces and textures. And there is nothing better than brunch. You want something sweet, but also tangy, something warm, but something crispy and indulgent. I think brunch, usually people coming from party, they're drinking. So let's give them that. And I served my buñuelos and I won tons of money for it. And uh, everybody loved them, mostly because they were so delicious. And it's all about these buñuelos. Lemon buñuelos, it's almost like a vignette or a donut. That's pretty much what we're making. Very fluffy. What I can say is like you're almost biting into a lemon cloud, right? It's crispy in the outside, but so fluffy and delicious and delicate in the inside. And these buñuelos or these donuts are based, uh, made out of ricotta. The way that we cook, the quality of the ingredients are going to determine the quality of your final product, right? If you use a great ricotta cheese and great uh, organic eggs, you know that that batter is going to be perfect. The key about this batter is to keeping the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients uh, one of, on each side, right? So what I'm going to do, something that I like to do a lot, is take the flour. All-purpose flour will be fine. We're going to put the sugar, again, all dry ingredients, the baking powder, okay, Lemon zest. This is going to give it the lemon flavor, right? You, 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 you have two ways of using the lemon. I'm all about sustainability and making sure that you use everything ingredient that you have. So usually my lemons and limes and all my citrus, I take out the zest before I put out the juice. Maybe I use it. Maybe I dry them. Maybe I make a spice. You know, you have so many uses, but this is a way. Make sure that you always take the zest of all your citrus and then use them as you go along. So I have my... Lemon says, this is a guide. You can put here lime. You can pretty much, this is the flavoring. Make sure that it's dry. So you can put a tiny bit of salt always to balance that sugar, right? And then what I like to do, I mix this and I have the sugar and the flour kind of infusing with the lemon says. And that's what's got, the longer that this stay here, the most fragrant the buñuelos and the vignettes are going to be. And this is, you know, when you're in the kitchen, let me have this. When you're in the kitchen, you have to be open to get dirty. That's why we have chest jackets and aprons and, and just be, you know, free. But always make sure that you keep everything super, super clean. Okay, so we're going to mix all of this. So let's say that you're making your buñuelos. Okay, so what I like to do, I take my eggs. Okay. My ricotta cheese. And I think that with the eggs, I had the vanilla. Oh, can we find me a little bit of vanilla? Maybe it's at this point. Right it was yeah. right there. Ah, yeah. here is. Here is. Yeah. And vanilla. Super important. So you mix the vanilla, the eggs, and the ricotta. So this will be the wet ingredients, correct? So please, come on in. Come on in. So what we're going to do, we're going to mix this well, Okay. Until the ricotta and the eggs are complete. You want to go? Yeah. Okay, so this is where you're going to beat it. You want to have the ricotta and the eggs completely mixed. So it's a smooth consistency, right? The Ah, beautiful. I wanted to show, show everybody how on this camera, you see? So you have a completely smooth egg and ricotta mixture. The quality of the eggs and the ricotta is key. And then you have this beautiful lemon zest or lemon infused dry ingredients okay 
Beautiful. So now, let's say that you have your guest. Let's say that chef is, you know, running around and you want them to have and you're being tested and you're going to do this, right? This is how I wait. For example, for my competition, what I did, is I needed to prepare everything one day and then we cook for these 300 people the day after. So I'm like, my God, if I make my batter tonight, by the time that I'm serving these people tomorrow, this is going to be flat. So what I did is for the show or for the competition or for the challenge, I make these two things and I put them separately. So, okay, it's time. Next day, it, this could be refrigerated, no problem. It was even actually better. And the next day, when I put this together and I start doing my buñuelos, that's what I want. But you see, those are decisions that you make instantly. When you're in a competition show that it, it's so hectic and you have no time and you're running and it, you're by yourself and it's really, really, really intense. It's, again, putting yourself in situations that you're not comfortable. Step out of your comfortable zone, Right. And no matter, again, it's just be about being remembered. So I did this, and I want you to see the results. So I'm going to add this. Yeah. I want you to mix it all in the same. Super easy recipe. One of the things that I learned, that I have learned through the years, at the beginning of my career, there you go, you beat that in. And, and again, it's a super simple recipe. It's keeping things simple so you can make them perfect. I think that that is key. When you keep things or you keep ingredients and recipes simple, you have better chances to making them perfect. And it's all about elevating the ingredients and the items that you're working with, right? So if you want to start making so many sauces and you're going to start working and making it difficult and then you start putting and adding more things, at the end you're not going to know what you make and that it's going to be so hard that then the chances of going bad or going south are higher, right? And for you guys that you're in baking and pastry, that's probably the case. So keep it simple. Look at that dough. I want you to see it, how creamy. Just turn it towards the camera. Right? Look at that. Look at that. How beautiful. You did a great job. Look at that. Amazing. So you see, so it's a very nice wet dough that once you fry it, it's going to expand. And no matter how you actually, I like to use ice cream scoop about an ounce, an ounce and a half. I think that the scoop, the ice cream scoop, always is going to give you the same amount and the same size. And I think uniformity. Now, you see the battery is super simple. Now let's talk about the technique. What is it that we're going to use? Are we going to use a spoon? How it's going to drop on the oil? Now, if the oil that we're going to fry them is too hot, it's going to brown in the outside and it's going to be raw in the inside. So it's very important that we lower the temperature of the oil at, instead of 300, and 50 degrees Fahrenheit, we're going to go down to 330. So we let that buñuelo cook through and then started to brown in the outside. They're going to come go up. They're going to gonna float exactly go like a donut. Yeah. So I think that we should go and let's fry. Let's go, guys. Let's go and fry. Come on. There you go. Beautiful. Can come, closer. come on, guys. Can come closer and watch. So check this out. So we're talking about 320 degrees, ice cream scoop. One of the things that I love when I'm presenting, I like odd numbers. I think that odd numbers, one, three, five, seven, look better on a plate than two, four, and six, right? That is always something uneven, maybe uh, taking advantage of the negative space. When I say negative space, if you have a white plate, make sure that you have half of it empty. So you have that contrast, right? It's always about the contrast, flavors, textures, look, feeling. So make sure that you do that. So check it out. And I want you to give me your, give me, give me, give me. So check it out. I want you to do this. I want you to take your batter, right? And then use the corner to kind of clean the excess. So it's exactly the same every time. Always, completely flat, okay? I'm going to make the first one, and then you can continue. And then we just literally going to drop it. I want you to see how by itself is a perfect boiling. You see? It comes up. It comes up, and then you just literally just have to kind of help it out. It's going to start flying. You want to help me out so you can, you see? Then you can, I usually don't like to overcrowd the oil because you don't want the temperature of the oil to, you know, go down. And you see how 
fast. And then you just help it. You see, they come up on top. And then you're really going to, they take probably like three minutes to cook. Now, one of the things that you can do is always when you have a buñuelo ready, that you think it's ready, take it out, open it up, and make sure if it is cooked all the way through and it's nice and spongy, it's perfect. If it's not, then you know that you have to leave it a little bit more, or then you know that you have to lower the oil a little bit more. There is always ways to adjust. So remember, if you're cooking and the fire is on and something is burning, you don't have to, oh, my God, what's happening? No, no, no. You just took out of the fire. You are in control all the time. You're always in control. Oh, you know what? This is too hot. Yeah, it's okay. You re retire, you open it up, and you adjust. So remember that, it, you know, in, in the kitchen, it's all about the control that you have, the knowledge that you have. It's a control chaos. Make sure that you're always in control, right? If you're expediting and you're in the restaurant and you have 100 people waiting, 200, 300, 400 people, you are in control. That is always, when you're in a hurry, slow down. When you're in a hurry, slow down, okay? So check it out. So these buñuelos, they're almost there. This is a color that I like. Okay, check it out. Okay, so I'm going to put this here. We're going to let them rest. I'm going to let you fry the rest, and we're going to go with the sauces, okay? So we already have, this is a lot of, a, um, I would say, um, Breakfast brunchy items. I also have I'm having it my brunch Saturday and Sunday, but a dessert can go perfectly as well. So for our very uh, prune sauce, we're gonna use uh, prunes from California. Uh, these are great. Uh, you know, one of the things that I love about these prunes is that you can um, notice that they are like they have the highest quality of control when they're raised uh, the climate in california are really the best to produce these prunes the processing with the package it uh is really at the highest standard that's why i strongly strongly believe that they're the best what i like to do is i like to take a little bit of juice uh, for those countries in which you can use liquor, uh, maybe a little bit liquor and just make that those prunes absorb that liquid and, and that will go really well into the sauce. We're going to make two sauces. We're going to make a white chocolate sauce and we're going to make a berry sauce or a berry coolie. So let's turn this on. Chef, please. Thank you so much. There. Beautiful. So what we're going to do, Chef, we're going to add the berries, uh, simple berries, correct? So you're going to add regular berries to a pot. One of the things that I, uh, I like about berries, if you have a fresh, minimum, minimum water, a little bit of sugar, chef. So usually we do a little bit of sugar, a little bit of lemon juice. Perfect. Beautiful. Now the sugar is going to start the lemon juice. So you always want to create that, those uh, balances between flavors and textures, correct? So if you have something sweet, you have something acid. If you have something creamy, you want something crispy. So think about that bite. What is that perfect bite that you want to, you know, touch in all those points in your palate? So what we're going to do, and we're going to add, oh, I would say one, two, three prunes right there. So you're going to let this reduce. When do we know that this is ready? A simple syrup is going to start forming, right, which is the reduction of X liquid, in this case, I'm going to use the same liquids that the berries came in. Uh, and a little bit of lemon juice, that liquid also works. And we're going to let that reduce with the sugar. And this is going to start becoming glossy. Once it's glossy and bright, vibrant, we're ready to go and blend. We can blend it in a strainer. We can strain it right away. We just need to make sure that this is a beautiful thickened sauce, okay? So I'm going to go. I'm going to put this one here. Can you turn this one in the back too? Why would have that? There you go. There you go. So we're, we're cooking this. You can cook it low and slow if you have a little bit of time, or you just can crank it. This is a very forgiving sauce. This is a sauce that you can spread. It's almost like a marmalade. You can spread it. You can leave the seeds of the berries or not. It's entirely up to you. That's when I feel if you want to have those specks uh, or you just want to have a smooth sauce, depend on entirely of what you want to do. So just make sure that it reduces at a medium heat. So now for a white chocolate sauce, you have here condensed or evaporated. Uh -huh. Beautiful. So we're going to have a mixture. We have something in Latin America called dulce de leche. 
right, which is a condensed milk that is being cooked in the can and it is cooked for an hour at very low temperatures and becomes very like a caramel. And that's exactly what we're going to do. But in another, we're going to go there in another route. So we're going to take the evaporated milk. You can use equal parts of evaporated milk. Go ahead. Actually, let's change so you can be there. There you go. You're going to have your sweetness. I love condensed milk. Go ahead. Perfect. And to all of that, we're going to add white chocolate. So the sugar is already in the condensed milk. You have the evaporated milk, and then you have your white chocolate. This sauce can go anywhere. What do we have here? Um, mm, oh, my goodness. You see? I taste everything. Doesn't matter what it is. Just taste it. Now I know that it is vanilla. We're going to put a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of a lot. <laughs> and we're going to let that cook now. Because look at the difference between fires. This is a more vigorous fire, right? Because we're just reducing. Here we have milk and sugar. This can burn in two seconds. So what we're going to do is exactly what she's doing. She's mixing slowly. The fire is there, but not too much. She can always, because she's mixing and she thinks that this is going too high, the only way that she's going to have the control is like she retrieves the pot, continue to mix, and go back to the fire. And instead of going up and down, you really have more control when you kind of yourself putting up and down. So look how those buñuelos are coming out. Extremely delicious. We have our berry acid, right? Contrast, chocolate, creamy, sweet acid, velvety, more, uh, I would say, of a sauce. And then you have the beautiful lemon, crusty, pillowy buñuelo. And when we put all this together, it's going to be the bomb. Any questions? How are we doing? Are we doing good? Let me see how my, my chefs are doing. <laughs> so check it out. I'm going to take the first one. Actually, let me go in between the girls. Look at that. So you see, so this one, Chef, what we're going to do, we're going, okay, we can do two things. Let me lower it a little bit. So this is great that this is happening because I want you to, we're going to put this in the oven. If you yeah. have an oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, it would be great. So you see, this is a little bit wet, still in the middle, right? And it should be the consistency should be, let's see how these ones are coming out. You see, it's still a little bit wet. Yeah. A little bit wet in the center. So we can do two things. She can keep them a little bit longer. Or because we have already made this, we're going to put it in the oven in a tray. And we're going to finish it at 350 degrees for five minutes. And it will be perfect to be served. So you always have that way. Knowing your technique and knowing how you can come back. And maybe this is a great way. Let's say that we have 50 people, 100 people. We do this. We do the first fry. And then we finish it in the oven to kind of do that. 30 minutes before serving, and then you're completely ready to go, right? So let's leave them just a little bit more. I always like to bring the fire down because you can cook it from the inside all the way through the outside without getting raw in the middle and then having this uh, result. But this is perfect. You're going there. We're going to put this in the oven at 350 degrees. Look at the sauce. So now it's a matter of reducing it. We can go as thick or as thin as you want. In this sauce, I like to reduce it almost like a caramel consistency. So it's really nice and indulgent. You definitely get in there. Those, what we're going to do is, let me take, let me see. I'm going to steal this from this group. Ah, here, here is. I don't need to steal anything. So you see, what I like to do is I start breaking a little bit of the fruit right here. Okay. Any questions so far, guys? You guys have any questions? Are we good? You getting it? Use the moment. Chef, is there any other fruit that you would replace for lemon? You know what? You could, depending on what is the notes that you... Uh, I will stay with the citrus. I will definitely stay with the citrus notes. I think that that's kind of the best. Beautiful. 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 I want you to see 
Look at that. You is nice and smooth. There you go. Oh, is it? There you go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Just a tiny bit more. So she started reducing. Again, you can leave it as is. You can take this, blend it, and then if it's too liquidy, you continue to reduce. Remember that reducing any sauce is the best way of thickener. You have many thickener agents, right? You can do a slurry. You can do flour and a roux. But the best way to thicken a sauce is reducing because it intensifies the flavor and it's pure. So that's kind of where I like to live. Okay, this is done. So we're going to take this. We're going to let it cool a little bit. And then we can pass it through a chinois and get, I like to get rid of the seeds so it's more smooth at the time that we hit the plate, okay? Then you have this one that you're making that is being already reduced here. Beautiful. And then we have our berries and our salt. Wonderful, wonderful. A ver, a ver, a ver, a ver. Perfect. Perfect. It's no raw in the middle. Fantastico. So let's do, let's do this one. Let's put them all. There you go. Go ahead, look. I wash my hands thoroughly. Okay. Lorena, yes. you go back to the table there to do your presentation because we have a few, few plates you can choose. From. Let's do so it. Once we finish this, yeah. We okay. take this with us, correct? Bring this for presentation. Yeah. I help you, Chef. Okay. Yeah. Thank Just you. Me. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Bring that. Yeah. I think that even you can save it and reduce it later so you don't miss this. Venga, venga. Yes. You know what? You can do it both ways. I like them hot. And if they're warm. Cold, they would lose the crispiness, right? No, 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 they don't. they don't. They don't. I just like, because it's a brunch item, breakfast type of, I like to serve them in nice and hot when they come back. But you always have to let them chill for a minute because we're going to powder them. And when you powder them, uh, if they're too hot, the, the sugar melts. Yeah. So we want to wait. They relax. And then you can do this. Let me put this right here. Oh, so we're going to present in this yeah, side. Let me pick the plate. Yeah, okay. Pick what you would like. Oh, my goodness. This is so beautiful. You can do two plates. Let me do two plates, right? Two different presentations. Let me take this. Okay, so we have a couple of presentations. This is, this is you. This is all about you. How do you feel that this should look? Um, but this is how I do it. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do once they're ready, we're gonna shower them with the sugar, right? Make sure that you have just a little bit, kind of so you can see. I mean, the vignettes in New Orleans, they, they go like this. It's a little bit too much. I don't need to be so much power, but you know, like, a nice like a nice place so we have this i'm gonna start with the traditional presentation that i do at my restaurant in the restaurant has to be beautiful but i have 250 seats so i gotta go right so the less steps i have on the line the better results i'm gonna have in timing and with my customers right so i created this presentation for uh, for the restaurant again fast nice but go so i take my raspberry sauce and this is going to be the base for the buñuelos so what i like to do is i like to paint the plate right in the middle i like to be i like to be a, a little bit uh, generous you know because this is actually where the buñuelos are going to live okay then I'm going to take the sauce. Then I'm going to place 
my buñuelos. Okay. Then I'm going to grab this beautiful. Usually what I do is I place, take a knife. If you can find, can you yeah. find this out for me? Yeah, of course. Thank you, sir. Then I grab a little bit of the fruits, kind of place them. Look at this beauty. I mean, you can literally just play with them. Okay. A little bit more raspberries. And again, you have the citrusy of the of the fruits with the vignettes. Okay. If I will have dry lemons, probably I will put some dry lemons on top. I forgot to bring them. We yeah. Them over. yeah them over. So this is one lemon buñuelos. And then the other one, if I have a bottle, oh, yeah, sure. thank you, Michelle. Appreciate it. So maybe what we can do. Sorry for my, I'm sure that your pastry structure can do so much better than me, but there is. So beautiful lemon buñuelos, very light. This is kind of what we do in the restaurant. Then what I recommend to my customer, grab a buñuelo and like smothering all the sauces, you know, like go for it and just have a bite that you're going to see the difference. The other one, it will be literally, uh, Okay, and then I can grab, this could be a little bit more reduced, right? So it stands a little bit more. And then we just go ahead. Okay. So be right here. Okay. And then same thing, finish off. One of the things that I like to do with the zester, right? You just put a little bit of this lemon zest right on top. I like to go straight with the lemon in the zester. <coughs> Sorry. And then you just go with it. And then again, your fruits, right? Then you just kind of leave here put some fruits and that is this is a very simple dish it's about simplicity right so well you know they had you know four or five ingredients uh very simple the sauces can be made in advance but you learn when you have a restaurant you learn that practicality time footprint how much time my cook is going to be spending making this dish and if you have a line of 50 orders, they need to be able to make it. So this is a presentation that definitely worked. Again, I will have some dried lemons kind of worked around and with the uh, and with the zester kind of finish it off. So very simple, lemon buñuelos. Very good recipe. Brunch and breakfast, it goes really, really well. Do you have any questions? Yes, yes, yes. I believe and I have all of this written down. This is through trial and error. When I'm making breads and when I'm making all this type of batters, uh, yes, and, and I'm sure that I can, you know, give you the recipe with the measurements. It, it was already measured. I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's a cup of ricotta, half a cup of flour, two eggs, three tablespoons of sugar, a teaspoon of baking powder, and a lemon zest. Am I right, Chef? Am I right? <laughs> there, there it is. There it is. Perfect. Yeah. I think that I was perfectly fine. I mean, I, I usually with these recipes, what I do is I can spend a week making this easily. For example, I make a Colombian bread that is called pan de bono. It took me two weeks to make that recipe. So the right ratio of cheese, the right ratio is how do I want my, my bread, Lorena Garcia bread, which is not the classic recipe, right? It's my take on it. 
it, that's when you start playing and then maybe you like a little bit more cheese, you can play with it and see what how it reacts. It's about discovering that. I mean, I have burned so many things. I have gone wrong so many times, but that's the only way to learn, right? It's kind of putting that intention. So never get discouraged if something burns or it doesn't happen or it just, then we just cook at the end of the day, right? It's how we approach it. And it's not how you fall, it's how you come back, right? So now we're going to sign off from being live so that you guys can cook and Chef Lorena can walk and uh, work with you, okay? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Nos vemos pronto. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> yeah. As I prepared for, to work with Chef Lorena for this demo and webinar, the more I researched her, the more in awe I became of her, and I felt it was incredible to get this opportunity to work with you. Thank you, Chef, for coming all the way here. And my pleasure, my pleasure. It's been yes. a remarkable and memorable experience that I will take with me forever. Thank you for welcoming me into your home, your screen, to your school. Uh, I'm a phone call away. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a instant message away a private message away let me know if you have any questions uh, and how can i support you or advise you in any way it will be my absolute pleasure thank you for having You're me welcome i would also <laughs> thank you i would also like to extend a very special thank you to the usda's fork on the road initiative and the culinary diplomacy project for inviting her to the UAE and making it possible for her to spend this time with us at ICCA. The USDA's uh, Foreign Agricultural Service expands and provides access to foreign markets for US agricultural products through various in initiatives, one of them being through education. And uh, I would like to thank Councillor Valerie Brown, the Regional Agricultural Councillor, for the FAS in Dubai, because she emphasizes how in, in, initiatives such as these can promote American diverse regional culinary culture and traditions and offer an exchange of knowledge of the country's food systems to the UAE. Thank you, Valerie, for the vision and for this opportunity. I would also like to th thank Lauren Brenstein. Yes. I want to say, Lauren Bernstein, the creator of Chef uh, Culinary Program, uh, Chef for Diplomacy Program. Chef di yeah, Culinary Diplomacy. Culinary Project. Diplomacy Project. Project. Culinary Diplomacy Project. I admire you. Thank you for making such a difference in us, Chef, in so many cultures, uniting us all. I will be forever grateful to you, my friend, for bringing us and having this amazing experience. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Her organization has been instrumental in selecting a group of eminent chefs to participate in this program and to encourage mutual understanding among people of diverse cultures through a global culinary exchange. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you very much. <laughs> Last but not the least, I would like to thank all our viewers for being with us and encourage you to try out these amazing Bunellos on family and friends and to tag us on at Chef Lorena, at Caproons, <laughs> at Aquila Aquila, and I, at ICCA. Don't forget the hashtags at hashtag USDA, hashtag Fork on the Road, and hashtag ICCA Live. Bye-bye for now. And see you very shortly with the other eminent masters. Oh.